what's the AV budget? You're doing everything on a house. You know, the lighting, the cameras, the 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 TV, the theater. Our entry level jobs are around three hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and they go all the way up to about six million dollars. Tosh show. Tosh show from show. It's Tosh show time. Who's ready to be entertained? I am. I can't hear you. I am. You can do better than that. I want to be entertained. Shanauzagus. 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 Hey, everybody. It's Shanauzagus. No. Oh, Dylan, I heard you just got back from a cruise. Ooh, that had to be fun. I was on a cruise once for a week. Let me just, let I'm me exp- learning new languages. Hey, Shanauzigas, shut up. No, I, I can't a- shut up. Oh, we, have to, she, we have to sing it. You right. conjured Shanauzigas, me. Shanauzigas, 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 Shanauzigas. All right, here's the thing people need to know. I'm almost 50. Eddie's over 50. And this guy, one time... He created this character, and if you say his name, Shanauzigus, three times, uh, he just starts talking like that until you sing his name five times to stop talking like that. These were the rules that he came up with, and it like it made our wives just furious. Mm-hmm. We just do it constantly. We we just randomly say the name three times, and then Eddie would go into this character, much like Andy Kaufman, uh, minus the the success and, <laughs> and and everything else. But man, did it used to tickle me. It's a divorce dragon. Father what is it? What's the he's character? A divorce, divorce dragon, father of two, smoker, and sometimes he pulls his diaper off. Uh huh. That's so it. there's the backstory to his character. That's it. It's Beetlejuice. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I'm sure. Listen, we robbed. There's there's a lot of things hey, that candy, I'm sure stole from. Hey, I don't it. have any water today, you guys. What are oh, you trying to do? You can't do a podcast without water. That's a rule. Now watch this. Magically. Look at that. Water. Ah. The the real time. I gotta I gotta be careful how many times I say the word because because he'll keep track over there. And then that character comes out and you can't stop him. You can only sing him, sing him to sleep. But uh <laughs> I used to do it in the writer's room, and nobody else knew about our little inside character that he had created. And it would just, it would just throw, throw, throw everything off. I would just walk by the writer's room, say his name three times, and then just leave for 45 minutes. And then I knew nothing was going to get done that day. <laughs> Those are good times. You watching uh, the NBA Finals, Ed? I am watching them. Mm, who are you rooting for? I mean, I can't root for Boston, so Dallas. You can't root I can't for Boston. Root for, I like the city. Don't like the sports teams. Now, I hate the sports teams uh, uh, for the most part as well. And I, I'm told as a Miami Heat fan that I have to hate the Celtics. But I don't actually hate the team. Yeah. I, and, and Dallas, now they've cost uh, the uh, Heat a title or two. Um, so I, I could hate them. I don't, I mean, Kyrie Irving bothers me. I feel like every... Every uh, post game interview, some reporters just say, "Hey, just just check in. You still think the Earth is flat?" <laughs> yes, uh, I know. And and, and uh, any any hot takes on Gaza, and then then and then move on to sports related questions. Let it go. You just you just can't. It's just unacceptable to ever believe the Earth was flat for a second. And if you do, then that that should, for the rest of your life. He should be like, oh, I was joking. doesn't matter. Every question should be like, oh, before I ask you about uh, your lack of uh, playing well in this series, uh, is the earth flat? And I don't like uh, uh, Luca's uh, whining. That bothers me. Hard to cheer for. Boston, I don't hate the players, though. I worry. I feel bad for the city because there's, there's no real white person for them to cheer for. I mean, although Porzingis, you know, when he's when he's not hurt, technically he's he's kind of like two white people. Mm-hmm. He's so tall, so that's that's probably neat for their fans. And then they've got what's his name? What's the the little guy? Peyton Pritchard. Pritchard. Oh, they should. There should be a a rule for him in the NBA that w- when he's playing in Boston, uh, he's allowed to play with a cigarette in his mouth. <laughs> Cause that's what he looks like to me. Like he's just like he's just called off the street and like, I'll, I'll play basketball. Sure, give me the ball. I know how to shoot. Uh, that would be fun. And then what's his name? Derek White. I know he's not white, but counts for something. That probably ingratiates him with the with the city of Boston. I don't know who I want to win. 
I just want it, the currently the series is. Let's see. What is we're gonna dub in something? Because right now it's two zero. But I'm this by the time this airs, it'll be either over or three one. I don't know. I tell you what, all sports franchises need to consider relocating their team to Las Vegas. That's what I want. I want every team in every sport to be in Vegas. How's that sound, Eddie? It sounds great. Yeah. You want to go see live sports, you go to Vegas. They're still called the Boston Celtics, you know, the Boston Red Sox, but they play in Vegas. How about that play-in tournament in the NBA in Vegas? They do that outside. You have to literally play to get inside. You, you win, you get to play in the AC. Lose, you're out in the 110. <laughs> oh, people will die. That was like that one finals game, the Heat versus the Spurs, when San Antonio didn't pay their AC bill. Yeah. <laughs> LeBron was just cramping up on the sideline. Popovich, huh? Ahead of his time. But I like the idea of all sports franchises being in Vegas. They, these cities don't have to dole out billions of dollars for their new stadiums. It's just in Vegas. It's fun. You go there. You watch. You cheer. You lose money. The end. This makes Vegas relevant for the next century or so. Mm -hmm. And then you're, what are you going to do with the old stadiums? Yeah, you keep them. You monster truck rallies, Trump rallies, <laughs> Taylor Swift shows, whatever, whatever you do. I don't know. <laughs> That's, that's what stadiums are for. If you want to watch sports, you go to Vegas. I, I don't go. Do you go see sports live, Eddie? Every once in a while. Every once in a while. That's a hard pass for me. I just want to stay home in front of my beautiful home entertainment system, which I paid way too much for. Got a $1,000 remote control. Never works. Doesn't hold a charge. Always searching for a signal. Has to log into the internet before I can hit pause. It's infuriating. I got a million complaints, but I'll save them for today's guest. Enjoy. Show. My guest today is the one I call when my smart home doesn't work. He's my neighbor. He's my AV guy. He's a longtime friend. Please welcome John Alfano. John, am I right? Is it John? Yep, still is that John. Your name? Still John. John. Are you a junior? I am. Your 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 middle name's the same as your dad's yep. too? Yep. Oh, your dad. You got a great father. I love your dad. I love your mom, too. You got great parents, yet you turned out kind of, eh. Um, That's very questionable, yes. How many siblings uh, do you have? Younger sister and younger brother. And you're uh, all extremely Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I already know where this is going. Yeah. You, no, yes, I don't. Yes, very, very, yes. We're, my dad's full-blood Italian and my mom's Hungarian, so. Your, your dad, um, uh, a Vietnam veteran, is mm -hmm. he? Yep. Because he, he wears that hat. And I've never actually checked up <laughs> to make sure it wasn't stolen valor. It's funny, too, because, like, he never wore the hat until probably the last, like, 10 years. So, like, growing he up— He wears it every day of his life. Now he wears it every day. But, like, that's— that, Is he doing it for day. free coffee? What's he doing it for? <laughs> <laughs> does he get free coffee when he wears that hat? Uh, he should. I bet he, he does. He should. All right, so your dad, was, your dad was an electrician. Yep. And then you became an electrician. Yep, worked for my dad. And then uh, into that process, saw that I thought I saw the future was going to technology. Mm -hmm. uh, started hanging flat TVs when they came out and running speaker wires for people. And now, and now you're an AV giant. Yes. And then we'll, we'll get into to how much money I wasted and everyone else <laughs> in the world. How many times have you been electrocuted in your life? I couldn't even count. It's, it's something you don't even keep like track of. It's like how many times you misspelled something when you start writing a letter. Does it hurt? It's 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 it's, uh, it's like juvenating. Uh -huh. you know? Yeah, it's like juvenating for a second. Yeah. Rejuvenating? Now, is that what you wanted to say? That's that's the word. Yes, rejuvenating. <laughs> okay. All right. It's yeah. electrifying. Oh. Yeah. So you've been electrocuted a lot. A lot. In terms of electricity, what's the most dangerous thing uh, for someone to do themselves? Anytime you got to take something out of the wall, you should call a professional because you have an opportunity to get shocked. So like anything past changing your cover plates or changing a light bulb, you should probably call a professional. What about, what about when you have to do that converter? I watched you mess that up before. Yeah. yeah. Where you didn't have a convert. It was like 240 coming out or something. Oh, if you, yeah. Because if you get shocked by 240 versus like 120, what's cut out the walls, like it, that, yeah. that's a little bit different of a shock. Well, you didn't get shocked, actually. You just plugged in my beautiful chandelier and it was 240 
and and every bulb just, <laughs> just like exploded. went just went <laughs> and I was like, what in the like like a like, firework oh. show? You're like, this isn't 120, and I'm like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> That was in my office. Oh, see, that was oh, this was the off. Oh, that was two seventy seven. That's what that was. Yeah, that was commercial electricity. Yeah, we. Fr- I think we fried a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> now you are born and raised in Los Angeles, correct? And we met uh, down in uh, Hermosa Beach at the Comedy Magic Club after a show. Uh, I, was, I was a young kid at the time. I had just moved to South Bay. And then you're like, hey, I can hang a TV or something. I don't know what I said. You, yeah. And I was like, well, oh, come over to my house. I got work for you already. I, I had no money, but I had, I had a little, I had bought a house, uh, my first home in South Bay uh, with all the money that I made from Taco Bell commercials. <laughs> that was how I got to move down there. Yeah, I think the only reason you talked to me is because I was with my girlfriend, but she had like four of her girlfriends with us. Yeah. So you were like, oh, and then we went out. But the thing was, I, you know, uh, that is true. But you know, the, uh, your wife's older sister uh, was was with you guys that night too. Nikki was there too? Yeah. She's like, I bet you can't tell which one of us is older. I'm like, <laughs> I can tell you're older. <laughs> How much does Heather weigh? How much does she weigh? Yeah. Uh, 115 pounds. Oh, huh, interesting. Yeah. But I just think that's a funny question for her if she's listening. <laughs> to be like, Did he just ask how much I weigh? You're a partner at AHT Global. What's AHT stand for? Advanced Home Theater. You're basically Geek Squad for the the super rich. Or like Geek Squad for the one percent of the one percenters. Ooh, yeah. wow! Yeah. If it's technology related, everything from internet and cameras and. TVs and speakers and lighting and shades. Right now, the coolest thing we're doing are the uh, LED walls. LED walls. So there's yeah. no screen. There's no television. It's just a, a the full wall is an LED wall. Full wall, the si- any size you can do, any shape you can do, and it's the full. It's like a Las Vegas sports book when you walk in. So you can watch one thing at one time, and you can watch it all in 4K. 4K. Uh, it's yeah, and and then it never turns off. Like you make it so it never turns off. So there's not like a black wall. It literally turns into like interactive art or something. So there's like interactive art when it's off. You can watch stuff through it. It's cameras, you know. Can you divide it up and like oh, not make it as watch, the full screen? Yeah. Watch something small, do 10 things at one time. Oh, that's some, pretty good. Some houses like in basements that are windows. It's pretty cool. TVs have gotten really cheap though, haven't they? The TVs are like the stock market. Like when they come out, they're expensive for like a couple of weeks and then they drop. And about every six months, there's like a new line coming in. You fought me. You were trying to put TVs in every room in my house, or at least the wire. I said, don't, I don't need it. Mm-hmm. I go, the future, we're not going to need actual hardwired TVs. And was I right? You, or- yeah, this is, you, you're the first friend and client I know that carries a TV around in a suitcase. Oh, the LG. Yes. By the way, I've seen that one uh, pop up on some of these blogs lately, and it's more expensive when I, than the one I bought or when, when it first came out. Yeah. I got it for like 800 bucks a year yeah. ago. I yeah. love that thing. I mean, it, you haven't seen it yet. You'll like it. How many studs do you need to hit uh, to, to, for it to be strong enough to hold one of these TVs up with these brackets? Just just one. One they stud. They rec- recommend two, but one stud will do. If you just hit one bolt, one stud, that's strong enough. Yeah. I mean, there's sometimes we do it with just with drywall with just the regular anchors and stuff. Well, that's because TVs have gotten light. Yeah. Uh. Like, like when plasma TVs first came out, mm-hmm. they were like 300 pounds. Oh, I, I had a, it, one of those old Sonys. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's like. I think, Eddie's that Sony still hanging? No, nah, that thing died. It was heavy. <laughs> Just getting it off the mount was like, oh my God. Yeah, that was a heavy TV. Holy yeah. shit. You know, Danny Via, man, he still gets mad at you over the thinking that you hung a TV in his apartment crooked. And this might have been. 20 years what? ago and he won't he won't let it go. He still's like he's like he, that, he ripped me off, man. What? That TV was crooked. What what kind of budget are people putting in uh for let's just start with a theater. So, you know, the glass ceil- glass ceiling for like a like a super super high end theater with like DCI, which is first run movies like that you have like in movie theaters, right? Like if you want to watch them day in, the day they come out. What? People do this? This is this is people in Hollywood. There's an eclectic group of people in Hollywood who can't go to like movie theaters right. so they have well, the stuff in their house. Um, but they, but they, just because they can't go to the theaters doesn't mean they can't wait fucking three weeks. Well, but if you're an executive, you need to be watching Fine. stuff, whatever. How right? much does that cost? Just just the entry Shh. level for that, just the equipment just for that, not building out the room and stuff is half a million dollars, right? Just for video equipment, the projector and all that type of stuff. Then once you put speakers and build the room out, you're usually about a million to a million five. For their home theater? For a home theater in somebody's Woo-hoo-hoo. house. Yeah. Those are big numbers. 
Those are big numbers. My theater uh, that you that you built out for me yeah. is, is the fan on it is so loud. On the projector. On the projector. That's because you have a laser projector, right? Like there's like a laser in there. So that's it's cooling, it's cooling everything. That's I don't give a fuck. Stuff. It's loud. Yeah. Well, you have a laser sitting over your head. So well, yeah, I'll tell you what the, the problem too is, is is like within six months, you're like, well, yeah, that's you should replace that. And I'm like, what? I thought you know, you, I thought I was gonna have that forever. There's new tech like Every year, right? Mm-hmm. Like, look at think, think about your phones and that type of stuff. Um, if if you're buying like top notch stuff now, you can kind of future proof yourself for about six to eight years. You can future proof yourself for eight years. But if you <sighs> take things that aren't as new and stuff like that, and you go like to the mid tier and that type of stuff, I mean, it's like every two years. What about security cameras? What do you what are you spending on people's security systems? We're doing somebody's house right now that we're spending. In, in Malibu, like a million dollars on security cameras. Just on the cameras? Just throughout the house. There's Is like, that P. Diddy? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're spending a million on cameras. But the camera world has changed because like now everything has AI built into it. So the cameras literally have like facial recognition software, pull the guy in wearing a blue shirt, like save people, license plate readers, suspicious activity. You can like drop a bag, like s- circle something in the camera and it'll like take you around the entire house every time that like object was somewhere and build a story. Huh? It's, it's not like a security guard really sitting behind a booth anymore. So if you need content, you can get it. Is it wasted money uh, making your home a smart home? The answer to that for me, and not because I want to sell you, the answer is no, because everything goes smart, right? Like look what, look at the evolution of cell phones. Look at the evolution of Bluetooth speakers and everything you have. If you buy a standalone air conditioning unit, it has an app that you can control from your phone, right? So you're going to be able to control everything in your house. And if you have a larger home, just picture like if you live in a 20,000 square foot house, how long it would take you to turn off the lights. At I time. can't imagine that. I mean, because I live in a tiny 8,000 square foot house. <laughs> I, I just can't imagine 20,000 square feet. Well, who would need such such riches? Now, I hate I hate almost everything, but I will admit, you, you talk me into stuff, and then I say yes. I will say that when everything works the way it's supposed to, mm-hmm. I, I love it. I couldn't agree with you more. It makes life easier using your phone, turn on all your dumb lights and turn stuff off, and what else? I like to be able to turn my jacuzzi on with a phone because it takes about 30 minutes to heat up, so you like to do it before you get home. What's the AV budget? You're doing everything on a house. You know, the lighting, the cameras, the 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 TV, the theater. Are are you like, oh, we, we're not a company that can do starting less than what? I think um, our entry-level jobs are around $300,000. Okay. And they go all the way up to about $6 million. Okay, now you you and your company, you have all my passwords to my cameras. Correct. Uh-huh. And and Wi-Fi. And my Wi-Fi. And so, Apple to, so I, what, iTunes what, account, what keeps Netflix. you and you have to you have to uh, vouch for everyone that works for you? Yeah. I don't I don't something yeah. bad's gonna happen. There's like a security protocol that everything sits underneath that anytime you log into these things, it mm-hmm. makes a carbon footprint of who looked at it and how long. So we know when people are looking how at How often are you guys just watching me and my wife walking around <laughs> making love in every room? <laughs> <laughs> huh? You guys watch that? No, Ugh. no. What's the most uh, insane? I mean, like you're you're walking into people's homes and they're doing God knows what. I, I'm sure you've seen some awful things or some exciting things. Being involved, like in the technology in the house, and you're pretty intimate with the family because of passwords and setting stuff up, and mm-hmm. music and all that kind of stuff. You know, um, there's been times where like clients will get a divorce, mm-hmm. and it's like I don't. They got to be locked out. Like, I don't want so-and-so coming back. And, oh, they got access on their phone. You got to turn their access off. Or, like, who's got access to the cameras? And, so you're doing that stuff. Yeah. That's like, you know, sometimes I'm like, have the lawyer call me and work it out. Like, who like who gets me in the custody? You uh-huh. know, like, who, who gets the house and who's allowed to see? My kids are in that house. Like, I got to see. You know, I don't care that I'm not living so there So you're anymore. logging people out. Oh, that's good yeah. stuff. That's fun. Yeah. What's the most common gate code people are using? <laughs> Actually, the most common codes that people will use is their phone number or their address. What about password? Password, use, it gets used a lot. What about 007? <laughs> you always have 007 in yours. <laughs> Don't you? Everybody knows my password. <laughs> <laughs> well, I shouldn't. Why do I know your password? Because well, a lot of times you set them up. And they're like, oh, it's just try password 007. 
<laughs> I'm like, all right. Try one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. If that doesn't work, try zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm like, God damn it. Where's the craziest place you've ever hidden installed a camera for a client? Let me think about it. See, this. I don't have any of my nanny cams on your system. Uh, they're all not Wi-Fi because I'm just terrified of somebody hacking into yeah, yeah, it yeah. and or yeah. talking to my children. Right. You ever it, seen those videos where like people hack into those and they start talking to the kids? Uh, listen, it, that's one thing everybody has to remember. Like anything that's on the internet mm -hmm. is hackable. Uh, what's the craziest place you've ever uh, hidden a camera for a client? So th not that I've put it in like in a specific location, but I've like anything weird that anybody's requested. But I, I did have this one client and like we put 80 cameras in the inside of his house. Like minus the bathroom. Like an OnlyFans fans person? I, it was just like, he was like, and it was weird. He, he okay. He, and it was a big house. And Athlete? He was, no, no, no. Actor? No, no, nobody of that nature. Business? Somebody with money, business. Business. Somebody with money. And like- In California? In California. Uh-huh. Now, he had like 80 cameras inside of the house. Uh-huh. Big house. Yeah. He was the only person who lived there. Yeah. It was like, he was like spying on his staff. Okay. Like, like oh, like I want to make sure they made that bed up in the guest bedroom that nobody sleeps in type of thing. Like it was just bizarre. What, and paranoid they, maybe? And they look like motion, like alarm sensors he made us put in. It was, you work in Aspen a lot. Yep. You, is that, that airport's terrifying it's, to fly into. It's the, it's the worst airport to get in and out of. Well, it's yeah. not. It, it just, it's just it's, scary because they have to small. drop into it, and then they have to take off like a rocket ship yeah. to get out of it. And if there's like wind, they, they like 12 miles an hour, they won't do it. Do you like the homes? Are the rich people in Aspen better or worse than the rich people in Malibu? They're the same people. Oh, it's the same. <laughs> they just, just their Aspen house or Malibu house. Oh, right. Or their New York house or uh -huh. their Florida house, you know. Hey, you met your hero once, didn't you? Yes. Before he died. Yeah. So uh, one of my cooler experiences, I got to meet James Gandolfini. Uh, he called me to do some work. And the first time I met him was like at his house in Beverly Hills. I show up. He's got a full on, opens a door, uh -huh. full on jumpsuit. Uh -huh. And he was like, yeah, I got this, uh, I got this box in the garage. I want you to check out. It's got my two channel system. I love two channel, hi-fi audio. So we go to his garage. Guy grabs a crowbar. It's in like like a wooden crate, and he's like prying open and like, like cussing, like opens up. To, and I'm like, dude, I'm in, I'm in a garage uh -huh. with Tony Soprano in a jumpsuit, and he's got a crowbar in his hand, open up a box. Like I was like, this is fucking awesome. That's pretty neat. Yeah. And he died like a month later. Okay, it was literally, it was literally like in that timing of things. Do you think it had anything to do with the crowbar? No, no, no. Okay. Do you believe in ghosts? Absolutely not. Yeah, no. Do. Yes, you do. No, I'm not stupid. There's no such thing as fucking ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> what about the Holy Ghost? Hmm? Oh, you know, you already know where I stand on that. No. Oh, you don't believe in that? Either. I thought. Well, no. I thought your Italian roots would would trump that. Which is ironic, but no. Uh -huh. Let's talk Tahoe for a second. You, oh, you came know. to visit me uh, in Tahoe. Uh, you and your wife, and this was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and your wife uh, was was very pregnant with your firstborn son. Yep. Um, okay, I'll let you take over the story from there. Uh, so we're on vacation with you and. <clears throat> the snow conditions weren't that good that year. But they were, were shit. They were up. We were up there, and it was like— And, and you're one of these people. I'm like, I got to go snowboarding if we're here. And then nobody wanted to go. Because it was shit. Because there was— It was icy, and there was no, no good snow. snow. So I decided to go by myself. You went to North Star. Went to North Star by myself. You rode the backside, which is <laughs> all black diamonds. All black diamond. And I ate shit and woke up four days later. Okay. It, all right. Let's, let's, <laughs> so— I'm with his extremely pregnant wife. And, you know, you're not supposed to ride alone. Everyone knows that. You're not supposed to ski alone. You're not supposed to snowboard alone. And he kept going, like, like let's go. I'm like, it's not in the cards, buddy. The, the snow is bad. I, I, I don't want to go ride on ice. It's not fun. So he goes alone because he's one of these guys. It's like, it, you know, it goes to Disney. It's like, well, we get there at 10 o'clock and we leave at midnight or what? I got to get every dollar's worth. You know what I'm talking about? All right. Yeah. So I'm in this house. We get a phone call, and it's uh, it was like I was like, "What in the world?" And it was like, a, "I don't know how they got my phone number." I think no, no they called no, Heather. They were calling your wife. Yeah, because your I, wife was in the shower. Okay, uh, I remember this. Oh, because I, I remember the water pouring down her body <laughs> uh, when I gave her the good news that her husband was dead. No, uh, but she was in the shower. That's right. So yeah. her phone kept ringing, and I answered because it, it, it had been a bit, and I'm like, we haven't heard from John, and and it like said police department or hospital or yeah, something. Yeah. So I answered it, and they're like, um, there was an accident, uh, John's in the hospital, and then I was like, wait a second, are you? And I was like, is this hospital in Reno? 
And I'm like, holy shit, which is always the irony. If you get really hurt in beautiful Tahoe, you wake up in Reno. Oh, <laughs> and that's, yeah. that's a bitter pill. I have to tell his wife, I have to get her out of the shower. And like, I, I went in there and I, like, I whipped open the shower and she's like, Daniel, no. <laughs> and I said, we've got, anyway, it doesn't matter. Those details are blurry. I was, I was like, hey, there's an accident. We got to go to the hospital. Now your wife is a, is a nurse. So she's, you know, she's not, uh, uh, panic. She, she was a little panicked because they wouldn't give any information until you guys got there. Though. Right. You're in a coma for four days, mm-hmm. by the way. Yep. When you when you woke up and you just saw all of us there. No. So when I woke up, the first person who I saw was mm-hmm. my mom. Yeah. Which I'm like. That didn't make sense to you. I'm like, oh, this this isn't good. <laughs> like, like, oh, like she wasn't on vacation with us. Like, I was like, and then I remember like looking down at like my toes, my face, and then falling kind of back asleep. But I was like, all right, this. This is not good. I remember seeing your penis in the hospital. Oh. Oh, God, you're hairy. You're just a hairy <laughs> man. I was, I remembered. I was like, I was like, you know what? You should always kind of trim up just in case, just in case you, know you go what? into a coma. Ever, ever since that conversation, I've kept myself on a number ah, one. Ah. <laughs> uh, the ironic thing is you own a St. Bernard, don't you? I do. A mountain dog that could oh. save your life. <laughs> I've never even thought of that. You fucked everyone's vacation up. With your selfishness. <laughs> I mean, I got airlifted like in a helicopter. I know. You don't right. remember it. I don't know. I remember anything. You know, it was, it was, they put you in a coma. You didn't put yourself into it because yeah. you were being so combative. I, could, I couldn't remember anything. Well, yeah. that, that was the story they gave us. Did you think at that moment, though? Like, that I was going to raise your son? Yeah. Did, that, did it ever flash through your, your mind? No. <laughs> I mean, I, I certainly wasn't going to let your brother do it. <laughs> Imagine how much better your son's life would have been had I been his father. <laughs> You ever think about that? He got so close. Oh, oh he got so close. We, we partnered in on something, and then I was like, you got to move to Malibu. And you're like, fine. And, and you moved to Malibu. Uh, and now you're like just – you're the president of the Little League in Malibu. You're, you're friends with Iron Man and his whole family. Like what a, what a different uh, direction your life took. Because when I first met you, you just lived under the airport. <laughs> What was that? Where was that house? Westchester. Westchester. Yeah. Those were fun nights when I'd be sleeping and you'd be coming back from the comedy club and knock on my window at like 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. And I'd answer the door and you'd throw like dog shit off the lawn, like in a bag. Oh, in a bag. Yeah, in a well, bag. I, I picked up after your dog. Yeah, you'd like throw it at me or my wife or, or she was my girlfriend She wasn't at the time. your wife. <laughs> By the way, your, your wife that you married was, you had a crush on her in high school, but she didn't like you at all. Is that correct? She either had a boyfriend or I had a girlfriend, so we didn't date in high school. But she wasn't interested in you. I don't know. Still to be determined. I don't know if she's interested in me now still. All right. But then you guys ended up uh, getting together, and and when I met you, you guys were a couple— then there was a, uh, it was a, how long did you guys have that separation board? Was that a year? Was that two years? How long about, was about, that? A, about a year or two oh, years. Oh, yeah. we call those the good times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, yeah. That was a, that, that, I had to pick sides. Your friends oh. break up and you have to, so I, 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 I sided with her because she had more girlfriends. <laughs> uh, John and I would hang out occasionally. But then you guys got back together. Then you got married and now you have three beautiful children. Yep. One of them, such a bitch, but <laughs> <laughs> they're all beautiful. But one of them, good God, she. Ooh, all right, I don't, I don't want to tip who it is. Today is, you know, today's my anniversary. Wedding anniversary? Uh huh. No. Yeah. Congratulations. How many eight years? years? Eight years. Eight years. And you know what? I'm going to tell you this honestly. Okay. You know, you know about this, the seven year itch. No. The, the seven year itch is like well, people, they, it's where people say like that's about the time that you, you want to cheat on your significant other. The seven year itch. Not as bad as the eight-year itch. Oh, the eight, the eight-year itch is strong. Got a scratch. What's the biggest lie you've ever told Heather? Preferably something she still doesn't know about. Oh, do you want to answer this? Don't please. answer it, you psychopath. You're fucking going to get yourself into oh so much God. trouble. You ever banged one of your customers? <laughs> Don't answer. I can't. True or false? I've had anal with your mother-in-law. <laughs> Now, hold, for people, not, I've known I've known uh, John for twenty some odd years, whatever. And for some reason, I've always just made this joke about his wife at the time. I think at the beginning of the joke, it was just his girlfriend. Yes. About uh, oh, I'd, I'd always I'd always hook him. It, it was kind of like a D's nuts joke. I'd be like, hey John, I'd see him. I go, hey John, what's going on? He's like nothing. I go, oh, man, you won't believe this. He's like, what? And I'm like, I just finished having anal with your mother in law, and it was just one of those things that I would do for years and years and years. 
the sad part is, is how many times I fell for it. Uh-huh. I literally would fall for it all the time. And then when you would look at me and go, Bonnie. Oh, Bonnie, Bonnie. Oh, good old Bonnie. The thing is, I, I want, I'm going to say it now. Uh, I never actually had anal with her. <laughs> I remember when you moved uh, in next to me and my gardeners came over uh, to do your yard and you like haggled with them for so long and I was like, bro, just fucking pay them whatever. And you're like, no, no, I have to let them know that I'm not like a real Malibu person. <laughs> like I'm a, I'm a working class person that just lives out here. I, and I'm like, God damn it, fucking John. They're, they're going to fucking do a shitty job on my house now. Anyway, you, you fired them, I think. Yeah. I, then I found somebody who worked for my prices and then they didn't do anything and I ended up doing half of it myself. <laughs> Then my pool guy started coming over and cleaning your jacuzzi. And you're like, you're like, one day you just said, hey, can you just teach me how to do it so I don't have to pay you? And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll teach you how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he did. He did. And he was like, he's like, usually I come in your backyard and play with your dog for about 10 minutes. And then I just sprinkle all this out of here and I'm out of here. It's pretty easy, dude. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see, I like it because I like the company. I like, I like all these people that know my gate codes. <laughs> I have two, you, I have two, separate gate codes for 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 staff and then uh, gate codes. It's my personal one, but I've forgotten my personal ones. <laughs> I only use the one that I know. Yeah. Anyway, you're also the president of the Malibu Little League. That I am. Why? Apparently, I like. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, like a lot of drama. I mean, that's just nonsense to deal with those people. It's it's insane. I, I listen. I like the kids and I like the sports, but did you play baseball growing up? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Which is even funnier. Uh, no, I did play baseball, um, but I don't know. Gianni liked it. Next thing I know, I'm the president, and now I take parents' phone calls at night about everything. All right, I got to give you some gifts. Anybody comes on my show, they get gifts. I, and I already know that you're uh, my size. So here, these are some Italian sneakers. <laughs> they got the Italian flag on them. Oh. You'll like them. They're, awesome. they're They're real Italian. You like those. <clears throat> you and I have been, sh- you've been oh. giving me shoes for years, but not, never with an Italian look, flag. Look on. at this jumpsuit. <laughs> now, this jumpsuit right here has only been worn in w- one scene of the new uh, episode TV show I shot called The Goat, and, and, and it's been dry cleaned professionally. But I think you're the only one I know that will wear something that fucking hideous. <laughs> <laughs> These are Italian. Are those slippers? No, they're shoes. Oh, those are cool. Yeah, I know. You'll wear them. You know I'll wear all this shit. This is so dumb. These are hideous, but they've never been worn. They've never been, been on my feet. But you, you you like ugly shit. Are these these are Kyrie's? I don't know. Oh, is that what they are? Yeah, these are Kyrie's. <laughs> Why do you say Kyrie like that? You know to say Kyrie? Kyrie? Kyrie. <laughs> Get this off my fucking table. <laughs> what do you think of that stupid uh, globe in Vegas? Does that blow your oh, mind? Dude, it's it's like that's like the is pinnacle. That your heaven? Oh, dude, it's 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 everything. That's five billion dollars worth of technology. Like the most trans sending experience you can have for like- Did you go there? I haven't gone yet. Oh, well, no. what the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah. That's your thing. Well, because you 2 has been playing there. I'm not a huge fan. I was like, I wanted to see who was going to play next. Oh. Yeah. Who would you like to see there? Bruce Springsteen? <laughs> 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 who would you want to see know. there? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I, What's your music? I don't even know what kind of music I don't know what music, music is you like. either. You listen to hip hop, don't I'm you? Sports, I listen to hip hop. I listen to You're listening to sports. Yeah, but let's talk about your sports because you're yes. a bullshit sports person. No, you, I'm an L.A. guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, from L.A., a true L.A. fan. Yet you uh, used to say you were a diehard 49ers fan. When we had no team. No, we, you had a team. You had the Raiders and you had the Rams and in I your nev- lifetime. I never knew Bullshit. you when the Raiders and Rams were here. I don't care if you knew me. Yes. You you liked the 49ers because you were a front-running kid. Because I like Joe Montana and Jerry Rice. Oh, right. Okay. We all did. But yeah. we didn't. You don't, you don't call them your team. Yeah. So you called them your team. And then once LA Rams started getting good, you're like, oh, I'm a Rams fan. And now that the Chargers are kind of hot, you're like. I'm not a Charger. I'm, I'm a Rams fan, a Dodger fan, and a Laker fan. You're a diehard Lakers fan. You know that. Uh huh. We've had many Kobe arguments over the years. Sure. Who's the greatest Laker of all time? Kobe Bryant. No, it's LeBron James. <laughs> How is LeBron James not the greatest Laker? I mean, I'm not saying that, that this this particular is, is moment he, of his career, but is LeBron James not universally considered a better basketball player overall than Kobe Bryant? Yes. Okay. And they're both they were both Lakers. But so that therefore that means what did LeBron do for the franchise? What did Kobe do? Kobe sure, won five but, championships. He won a championship for the Lakers. He won a Lakers championship. That won. that bullshit bubble yeah. thing. Yeah. Whatever. We'll take it. <laughs> keeps, you guys have a par- keeps us even with Boston. Did you, know, you have a parade it? for that dumb bubble year? 
We weren't allowed to leave our houses. And you think Kobe's better than Magic and Kareem? Growing up, like I've watched Magic, mm -hmm. loved Magic, but mm -hmm. like the journey Kobe took us on. Oh, the journey. Kobe, when fucking Kobe died, like I've never, I've never cried that much over a grown man I never met in my life. And I, I wouldn't have felt the same way against Magic. You know where I was when Kobe Bryant died? It was the craziest thing. I was surfing in Fiji. I was in the middle of the ocean. A boat had taken me and this, uh, Pete was with me. Mm -hmm. He was on the boat getting seasick, puking like a fucking idiot. <laughs> uh, and I'm surfing in the middle of the, we get back to the boat and that's how big of a news was. These guys that didn't speak English, you know, Bula, Kobe Bryant, they just heard over the radio, Kobe Bryant died. And I'm like, and I'm like, oh, he's played basketball. They didn't even know who he was. But it was, it just spread. But it came to our boat. That's crazy. In the middle of the ocean in Fiji. I actually, that morning, Gianni got invited to a birthday party. Mm -hmm. Your over son. The, I drove over the hill. So I drove through that fog over Canaan. Yeah, but you're, you're, a, you're a liar and have revisionist history. It probably was like three days later and you're just no, telling, no. retelling so the story. I'm at this birthday party. I remember the fall. No, I remember because I'm there. Heather texts, calls me and she's crying. She's like, Kobe died. And I'm like, what are you talking about, Kobe? She's like, in a helicopter crash. Then I looked it up and it was like three miles from where I was. We were mm -hmm. in Calabasas. I fucking drove over there. Oh, yeah. That, that's how effed up I was. I like drove over there, was sitting there with all this traffic with a bunch of people looking like zombies. Like, what are we doing? What were you going to do? I don't know. I just I had my son with me and I'm like, let's go. You brought your son to help this? Kobe? I don't are know. I was like, fucking, I was in such shock, man. You're, like, that's fucking the worst parenting I've fucking have ever heard in my life. Hey, there's a, there's dead people over here. Let's, <laughs> let's go check it out. Do you recommend living next door to a comedian prone to tomfoolery? <laughs> Only if you want to be fucked with your entire life, right? Like, how many times have you, like, hit in my garage? And, like, I just, like, walk in the middle of the day to, like, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to work. You'd, like, be in there and be like, ah, and make me shit my pants almost or something. Or like, I do enjoy scaring people. Oh, it's always been my thing. A good, healthy scare you'd always get me on. Uh, there was a time where, like, I was, like, walking out of my house and you scared me. And, like, I, I think I dropped my brand new iPhone on the ground. Like, <laughs> <it's> like <laughs> <laughs> The funnier thing, though, is, like, think about, like, how you were with my kids when they were younger before you had kids. Like, you would come over, and Gianni would be, like— Well, you're just not next to me anymore. That, that would still be going on, oh, but, but they right would, now you're, you like won't finish your four. goddamn construction. Yeah, you'd, like, walk in and be, like, oh, do you eat dessert? Like, I'm going to eat the rest of your brownie. And they'd be, like— <sighs> we, had to, we had to explain to the kids that, like, you were, like, a character, like— Oh, it's like the cat in the hat's coming over. It's Daniel, our neighbor. He's like, like he's he's up to I did, no good. One like, time I, I, well, yes, but so once you started, you guys started calling me, the, the kids started calling me cat in the hat. I, I came over to your house one time and I had put a piece of cake on my head and I had a hat over it. And then we, I just sat down and I took my hat off and then I just started eating cake. And they were, they thought it was the greatest thing they'd ever seen in their lives. <laughs> <laughs> They're like this guy is and this guy is yeah. is amazing. Uh, He's got cake on his head. But that's mostly just because you love dessert. I have a sweet tooth. And my my family knows that. Like what Heather they made some You're, chocolate the other cake. Night, the other night, <laughs> I, I don't know. It was late at night. I get a text from your wife. Just beautiful tit shot. <laughs> uh, no, um, she doesn't send those to me anymore. She, no, she <laughs> she did. She doesn't send them to me. Uh, she says, "Hey, have you had dessert yet?" And I'm like, "Oh, this is the best text in the world." And I'm like, "I'm like, yes, but that doesn't mean anything." Uh, and she's like, "Okay, I'm, I'm coming over." So she comes over and she had made a new pudding chocolate cake. And rarely, rarely do I like other people's uh, you know idea of what they think is a good dessert. But that was heaven. She knew it was just enough undercooked. Oh yeah, that you would be all about it. I was good. Yeah. The, the, the problem was, and I'm gonna uh, now now to complain. She brought a carton of ice cream with it, and then my wife goes, "Oh, we'll just take just like we don't need your whole carton." Just she, my wife just like scooped like one small bowl <laughs> full of ice cream, and I'm like, "What the fuck are we now?" The next two days, I still had this whole cake, and I I had a like I had no ice cream. But that wasn't. Not only was that not your f second dessert of the day, didn't you have dessert at lunch? Well, I, I, I have dessert after each meal. Do you think that's why you shit your pants so much? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I remember when I was moving to Malibu and you were like, all right, so like, here's the things you need to know. Like, this is where you go eat. And then you were like, and when you're on PCH, and if you got to go to the bathroom, all the porta potties are on the ocean side. Right there on the ocean side, every every about almost every half mile you you can get a party. Man, that that one near um, winding trail, which is on the other side, happened to be. Whew, 
thank God it was opened at this hour one night because I <laughs> I barely got inside of there before all hell broke loose. And I was sitting there I'm like, why are you telling me all the bathrooms? Just in case you get shit. I'm like, most of us don't shit our pants. I'm like, you and like my father-in-law, the only two people I know. No, your father-in-law <laughs> shit, shit his pants at your, at your, well, not a wedding. It was that in Cabo. In Cabo at Thanksgiving. At, at Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, he shits his pants at the restaurant. <laughs> Uh, is it, is it, oh, it's the best. It was the best Thanksgiving ever. Oh, <laughs> speaking of alt right, um, <laughs> I have to bring this up because I get a lot of grief on my show because I people always because I'm such a disgusting Democrat loser. But oh. but people need to know that I hang out with all walks of life. Now you, I consider you alt right, not just because of your haircut, but <laughs> beca because. You stormed the castle January 6th, <laughs> did you not? Yes or no? No. No? No. Okay. You, there was a time that you liked DeSantis, which I thought well, almost made me want to stab you in the throat, <laughs> but I didn't. I turned turned a blind eye. Look at this. Two people from, from – he's from California. Mm -hmm. I'm from Florida. And, boy, politically, <laughs> politically, you and I do not see eye to eye. And we flip-flopped. I call everyone all right now if they don't believe in everything I believe in. You drive a Tesla, yep. which is an alt-right vehicle now, and you have Florida plates. How the <laughs> fuck do you have Florida plates? It's a company car. <laughs> We're Florida-based, the company. So we have offices for right. our clients so, all across so the United they just, States. Was that car ever in Florida? Yeah, that, that car came from Florida. You drove a Tesla across the Again, country? They, they shipped it out. Yeah, they shipped it for you. <laughs> all right. I was like, I was like, why does my neighbor have a Tesla with Florida plates on it? I couldn't, I never understood that. What is LeBron James's address? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Uh -huh. Do you have more athletes or uh, entertainment, uh, like like film, television stars? Where, is athletes more your bread and butter? Here in LA, mostly entertainment. Mostly entertainment. Mostly entertainment with some athletes, but then sprinkled across the country, more athletes than entertainment. Any any politicians? No. Did work for, I, uh, who's the vice president? Who's the vice president? What's her, uh, Kamala? Yeah. I, so I didn't work for her, but uh, her neighbor's house next door. So anytime she's in town, like there's a whole like barricade you have to get through mm -hmm. when you go to that, up that street in Brentwood. I'll say where she lives. She lives in Brentwood. What Jesus. Right off fucking alt-right. This is the alt-right <laughs> shit. This is the alt-right shit I have to deal with. I'm going to put your father on blast for his stolen valor. Well, John, I'm uh, sure uh, Heather will be very upset with me when this airs, but uh, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. All right, buddy. All right. Tasha. I want to thank John for being on the podcast. If I had a nickel for every time, Something went wrong with my AV system, and he quickly got there to fix it. I would have a nickel. Check this out. I got an email randomly from someone that worked at North Star, the ski resort, where John had his accident. They randomly wrote to us. They said, hey, this is Russ. I'm enjoying the podcast. Interesting and funny as hell. Don't change a thing. Okay, we won't. I do have an amusing Tosh story. About 12, 13 years ago, Tosh was in Tahoe for a show. I was living there, but whatever. I did have a show. Had a group of friends riding at North Star. One of them completely wrecked himself. I was one of the ski patrol supervisors working there. He ended up, uh, we ended up flying his buddy off the hill in a medevac helicopter. Oh, man. Later that day and the next, our ski patrol dispatcher asked me to talk to someone on the phone wanting to know the details of the crash. Anyway, the person said they were Tosh's agent or manager or something, wanted to know what happened, indicated that Daniel wants to know so that he could make fun of his friend. That doesn't sound right at all, but maybe. It caused me great displeasure to tell them I could not due to HIPAA laws and North Star's policy. He was sure that I was going to use the details to make fun of him in one of my South Lake shows. Anyway. He said, whoever it was, they were relentless. Called like three times. That is truly relentless. And he goes, anyways, hope the friend recovered fully. Eh, that's nice. I mean, I guess he did. I mean, who knows? I don't know if his, I don't, I, I, I probably didn't know him well enough to know that if his personality was slightly altered. You like that? Oh, what's that? This is my new pen. This is from the Boulevard Penthouses at, uh, where is it? Where do we where do we work? The Cosmopolitan. I stole one of your pens 
already Cosmo. Come check me out in Vegas. And uh, maybe I'll give you my pen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give know. You pen. I don't know. I got, I got another show's coming up. You know, we're going to be in New Orleans. Carl, do you know about that? You love New Orleans, don't you? You just love the rich culture. What else do we have? Oh, we're going to be in Hawaii, in Maui, in Honolulu. That'll be fun. Come spend your Thanksgiving with us. I won't be bringing Carl because I'm pretty sure Hawaii still has too many loopholes to jump through to bring the dogs. So I just leave them at home. They're happier anyway. Mahalo for your patience. <laughs> what else? Boyswearpink.com and uh, the goat wrapping that season up. Can't wait to have exciting news about the goat too. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know if there's. You got excited too. <laughs> I have no idea if they're picking the show up. Uh, anyway, we got a bedtime story. Let me tell you this too. My son this week just on a tangent, just constantly, and then he knows he has to go to sleep uh, when the story is done. So he's like a bad improv troupe, yes, anding me to death. <laughs> but it's just and then and then you think it's over, right, Carl? You need to be groomed. <laughs> What's going on in your world, Carl? You want to tell people about that dead rat you ate? <laughs> Ugh. I was like, where? I was like, oh, I got to go pick up this dead rat. Oh, that's gone. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time in a so, so red woods was these little mouse chickens. And then, and then, and then every day the baby will go out, a big, big, big bear would chase up to him. And yeah, I told you it was similar. And, 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 and every day he would say, do you want to race? And then, and then, and then they race it. And then the bear, and then the baby, um, I want the baby lover. I want the baby. And then the baby won, and then everybody cheered for them. They went back home. They had to dance in a dinner, and then in the morning, and then and then and then the bear said, "It's been a long time. Do you want to race?" And then and then they and then they races, and then and then and then and then and then the bear and then the bear tripped and fell, and then and then the baby. One and then there was so much out and and then and then someone had knocked it on the door and they opened the door up and it was a big big bad wolf and then he lived and dizzy and then he told us a book. Yes, it's a book about a bundle, mano, and he said bigger and he said to eat. People and then, but what not people who are fools? And they so boy, and he's so bold, bold, and they got a little boy, they got a little baby, cool man. <laughs> and then they laughed and laughed, and there was a bull, and there was a big cheetah, and a leopard corn. <laughs> and they, they said, with the pizza, with the bagalakas. And they all fly and laugh. <laughs> and laugh. And then the wolves ate everyone. And then they still lasted when he was in his tummy. And then the gingerbread man came and ate him. And then, and then, and then a candy man came and ate the gingerbread man. And then, and then. And then a bounty came and they and they ate the candy man and then a uh, and a locker came and they ate the bunny mm -hmm. and then the pathway. Mm. What? This is, I just want to go to bed. But this one story needs to be long. This story is so long. It's the longest story I've ever heard. It'd be short sometime, but I want it to be long. Yeah, that story's so long. And then it says seven, eight, nine. The end.